I cannot believe we are already into week four of stories. That's crazy to me. How are we already on the fourth story of the year? All right, well, this week um, our story is going to be the Horned Toad Prince, and we're going to be thinking about this question as we read. It says, what can we discover in the landscape of the Southwest? So we're going to watch this quick video. I'm going to turn the lights up for y'all so you can see a little bit better. What can we discover in the landscape of the Southwest? The Southwest is different from any other landscape. The climate is dry and hot. The plants don't need much water, and there are many interesting animals. Vast stretches of the Southwest are covered in desert, grasslands, plains, and mesas. The harsh climate made the Southwest one of the last parts of the frontier to be settled by pioneers. Since it doesn't rain often, plants like cacti have adapted to the climate and therefore don't need as much water to live. There are also a lot of animals in the Southwest. There are snakes, horses, lizards, and even coyotes. And like the plants, these animals are used to the heat. This week, you'll learn about the landscape of the Southwest. What can you discover in the landscape of the Southwest? All right, so that's what we'll be talking about as we are reading our story this next week. Alrighty. Go ahead and start talking about our skills for this week. We are going to be going back over author's purpose. So that's going to be a review skill for us this week. But first, let's look at some amazing words. We've got frontier. Now this should seem pretty familiar from when we did Lewis and Clark and me. Life on the frontier was hard work. What is a frontier? It is the farthest part of a settled country where the wilds begin. So that's kind of like where the city starts and the country kind of begins. But country, not like countryside, like farms, more like where no one lives. And there's some pictures of the frontier. Rodeo. Ranch children could have a free rodeo anytime they wander to the corral. What is a rodeo? It is a contest or exhibition of skill in roping cattle and riding horses and bulls. Raise your hand if you've ever been to a rodeo before. Yep, I've been to a couple. They're pretty fun. And here's some pictures of a rodeo. Corral. Ranch children could have a free rodeo anytime they wandered to the corral. But what is a corral? It's a pen for horses and for cattle. So it's kind of like where they're kept if they don't want them running free in a field. Picture like that. Creeks. Uh, there, was swimming, there were swimming holes and creeks to fish in. What's a creek? It's just a small stream. Not quite a river. Very, very small stream. Something that you could probably jump over. Small creeks, you can walk through them. They're probably not very deep. All right, like I said, we are going to be reviewing author's purpose this week and story structure. Author's purpose is the author's reason or reasons for writing something. So we can have an author who wanted to write something to entertain and to persuade or to persuade and inform. So it doesn't necessarily just have to be one reason. Authors don't usually tell you this. You have to figure it out for yourself. They're not going to start the story and say, I am writing this story to entertain you, or I am writing this article to persuade you. You have to read it and use your context clues to figure out what the author is trying to do. It might be to inform or to teach, to entertain, to express feelings, and to persuade you or to convince you. So remember, pa, persuade, inform, entertain. We're also going to be looking at story structure. Readers look at the story structure of fiction. The problem or the goal, the rising action or the thing that builds up to the most exciting part, the climax, which is the most exciting part, and the outcome, where the problem is finally resolved or not resolved. 
Readers also know when a story is told by a character involved in the action, which is first person, or by someone on the outside, which is third person. And we're going to use, I'm going to bring up that um, example again where first person would be us inside the room telling the story because we are in here. And Mr. Posey would be third person if he was outside looking in from the window trying to figure out what was going on. All right, some vocabulary this week. We've got bargain, an agreement to trade or exchange or a deal. Favor. We should know this word, right? We probably ask for favors all the time, or maybe your parents ask you for a favor to help them out. It is an act of kindness. So when someone says, can I ask a favor of you? They're wanting you to help them with something and hoping that you are kind enough to help them with it. Lassoed, roped or caught with a long rope with a loop on one end. So in rodeos, you would see them lassoing maybe pigs or sheep. Just like that, there's a lasso. Offended. When you offend someone, you hurt the feelings of someone or you made them angry. So if you say something and they're like, oh, that kind of offended me, that means you hurt their feelings or you made them upset. Prairie. A large area of level or rolling land with grass but few or no trees. So it's not this big forest area, it's more of just an open grassy area. And here's a picture of some cows in a prairie. Riverbed. It's a channel in which a river flows or it used to flow. So there can be water or it can be dried up. Just like this. See these riverbeds where that water is flowing? Shrieked means you made a large, a sharp, shrill, like high-pitched sound. Maybe when you got scared. All right, grammar this week, we are talking about compound sentences. Last week, we talked about simple subjects, simple predicates, compound subjects, compound predicates. Now we're talking about compound sentences. A compound sentence is made up of two simple sentences joined by a comma and a coordinating conjunction like and, but, or, or. So, for example, we've got two simple sentences. The horned toad looks like a toad, period. It really is a lizard, period. So there's two separate simple sentences. But watch how much better it sounds if I combine them together to make a compound sentence. The horned toad looks like a toad, but really it is a lizard. So I took those two simple sentences and I joined them together using the conjunction but. And also make sure that whenever you are making compound sentences, the two separate sentences have to have something in common. Okay, they have got to make sense together. You can't have a compound sentence like this. I would love to go outside, but my favorite ice cream flavor is chocolate. What? Well, that's cool that you would love to go outside and your favorite ice cream flavor is chocolate, but those really don't have anything to do with each other, right? Right, so we've got to make sure that when we are putting sentences together that they make sense together. All right, and our spelling words this week are long E words. We've got prairie, calorie, honey, valley, money, finally, movie, country, empty, city, rookie, hockey, collie, breezy, jury, balcony, steady, alley, trolley, and misty. And notice that that long E sound is at the end of all of these words, and they're all spelled a little bit differently. We've got I-E, E-Y, just a plain, just a Y by itself. All right. So make sure that you are looking over your vocabulary words, your grammar, and your spelling words. I know we've still got a little bit until our test because this is just day one, but we want to make sure that we're staying on top of it so that we can do the best that we can. All right, guys, I hope you enjoy the rest of your Friday. Have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you back on your screen on Monday.